Before we start this video, a large thank you to Keith, Max, Aaron, Scott, Tenacian, a name I unfortunately cannot pronounce. Thank you for the support, my friend, and Cody for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. I just want to say this before we start. If you are an absolute beginner, this series is probably not the series for you. You are more than welcome to follow along, but just know I'm not going to go over basic things like variable types, what a void is, what a coroutine is. You are expected to be an intermediate or at least have a basic understanding of the variable types and functionality within Unity. With that being said, you can follow along, you just might struggle, you'll have to stop a lot and look up some things as we're typing. I would also like to state my goal for this series, which of course is to help you become more knowledgeable in Unity and with netcode. Like yourself, I am learning things all the time too, so if you do things differently than me, that's awesome, I would love to hear how you do it. With that being said, let's begin. Hello everybody, so I am using the Unity build 2021.3.1.of1, if you want to use the same build that is fine. I'm using a URP empty template and I'm going to begin by adjusting my project window because it is brand new. I'm going to add a tab for the project, I'm going to drag it here to the right and I'm going to lock both these tabs so that if I click one it doesn't influence the other. I'm then going to drag my console just up so I can always see it, so errors are always displayed and warning messages. And we are good to go. So just going to adjust the sizings here. And this will be the window I'm using for the remainder of the series. Now let's go and begin by going to the package manager. And we're going to search for netcode. But if you typed in right away, you're going to notice you're probably not going to get anything. And that is because we're not looking in the right place. So click on packages in project and change that to unity registry. Now, if you go to the search box in the top right again and type in netcode, you will see netcode for game objects. At the time of this video, it is 1.0.2. So I'm just going to click install, and I'm going to give that a moment to install. That may take a minute, but it shouldn't take too long, honestly. The next thing we're going to grab is a tool called Peril Sync. You don't need it, but I strongly recommend it. It allows you to clone your project. So we're going to go and add a package from a Git URL. I will paste the URL in the description of this video and just click add. If you're unfamiliar with using Git, uh, there's plenty of tutorials and resources online. It's pretty straightforward. Again, you don't need this, but it makes your life infinitely easier. You can just essentially open your project twice instead of doing a build every single time to test multiplayer. So for a series like this, it's, it's just a staple, honestly. Now, if you have that installed like me, you're going to see Peril Sync at the top of your uh, project here. You can basically open a window called the clones manager. And we're not going to worry about that right now, but we have it there and we are going to use it in this video. So for now, let's create an empty game object. We're going to call this game object the network manager. And we're going to use a script from netcode for game objects called the network manager. Just think of this like the thing that takes in all the information for the network between you and other players. Okay. That's all you need to know right now about it. So the only thing you need to change on this is the transport. We're going to use the Unity transport. In the future, we're going to use a thing called Face Punch for Steam, but that is a while away. And you're going to see there's a few options here. There's start host, start server, and start client. Well, a host acts as a server and a client, meaning a player and the server itself. A server will be something if you had something like in the cloud that just processes the information, and a client is just a game client that connects to a server. So let's make a new folder and call this art, and let's make another new folder inside this and call this models. And I'm going to drag in, I will link this in the description, uh, my old friend, my low poly man that I use for all of my um, prototyping and testing. So again, this will be in the description if you don't have a model, but if you have your own player model, use that. I'm going to drag it into the scene here now, and I'm going to drag it back into a folder. But first, let's make a folder for our prefabs. So I'm going to create a new folder called data and then a folder inside of that called prefabs. So I'm going to keep organization uh, very important right from the beginning. So let's open or rather drag in our player. I'm going to rename him first a player and drag him into the prefabs folder. And now we have a prefab of our player. And if we edit the prefab in the project, the prefab gets edited anywhere it is in the scene. So in our network manager, let's drag in the player prefab into the player prefab variable. And this just basically creates or uses this prefab for any player that joins a game. So let's add a component to the player here and let's add a component called network object. And you're going to be adding this to basically every character in your project that is going to have some network data tracked. So all players and probably all of your AI. I'm then going to right click and create an image. It's going to auto create a canvas for me. And I'm going to use this as the title screen. So let's quickly make a simple title screen menu. 
I'm going to uncheck Raycast target on your image. That's important because if you make images that aren't being tracked by mouse clicks for UI buttons, for example, you don't need to have that ticked. It just wastes memory. So untick that. I'm then going to choose uh, scale with screen size on my canvas scalar object. I'm going to say 1920 by 1080. So that's going to change the size of my canvas. You can see it's quite big. Go to your image, click on this button up here, hold alt and click the bottom right little X here or the blue cross rather. And that will expand it and stretch the image to the size of your canvas, which again is 1920 by 1080. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to rename a couple things here now. So I'm going to rename image uh, to title screen background. And if we go into the Elden Ring menu here, you can see we have this press start button or press any button rather. So when we click this, some things happen. So let's just press it and see. You can see here it's checking our save data and then it checks for our network connection and it essentially starts our network. So we're going to do the exact same thing here now in our Unity project. We're going to start our network after we press this button. But first, we got to make this button, obviously. So let's I'm going to rename my canvas to uh, title screen canvas and I'm going to go over here now under the title screen background, create a new UI image. I'm going to call this banner. And you can just make this text if you want. It's just the banner of the game, like on Elden Ring, it's just Elden Ring in giant letters. I'm going to make this whatever size I feel is necessary, but this isn't too important. Obviously, this is a stylistic preference. Uh, again, if you're if you're using an image like me, you want to untick raycast target because you don't need to click this image, so it doesn't need to be tracked as a raycast target. If you have a lot of images in your UI that have that box unticked, it can add up. Uh, for performance long term. So go to the image, change it to a sprite, 2D and UI, change it to a single and click alpha is transparency. If you just drag in some text like me from Photoshop, um, again, you can just use text in Unity. This is just a style choice and it's not important in the slightest. So now that I have that up there, tutorial series, Elden Ring in Unity, I'm going to click this anchor point on the top. And that means if my canvas scales at all, this image should stay towards the top of the screen. Then I'm going to go into the UI, uh, or the background rather, and I'm going to create a button, okay? So this button is gonna be our start game button, or rather press start, as I'm going to call it. I'm just gonna call that press start button. I'm gonna drag that down, and if you want to, you can anchor it to the bottom of the screen because it's kind of near the bottom, so click this icon and then hit this bottom anchor icon. And I'm going to change a few things about it. So the text, I want this to say press start, or if you want, you can say press any button, whatever you're going to set it up like. Um, I'm going to change the text to white, and then I am going to change the button a little bit. So the normal color is the color of the button defaultly. And then we have the selected color, which is what we want. That is the color of the button that it turns to when it is selected. So the button is going to auto select when we start the game, we're going to set that up. So that's all that you're going to see, basically. In the future, we can animate it and have it pulse, but that's not important right now. Let's not get lost in the polish. So I'm going to go to the normal button color and change it to something a bit darker. You'll never see this, so it doesn't really matter, to be honest, anyway. But I am going to set it up in case we do somehow. And I'm then going to, after I'm happy with that, I'm going to basically go down to the selected color and change it to, I'm just going to use a red to indicate that it is indeed highlighted, okay? Now, I have no text, as you can see, it's not appearing for me. So this is because you're probably gonna get this window called Text Mesh Pro Importer. Just click Import Text Mesh Pro Essentials. This happens the first time you set up a text in the Unity project if it's using Text Mesh Pro. And then your text should appear like me and you should be fine. Okay, so now it just is press start, that's fine. That's all I need. Let's zoom out a little so we can get our bearings. And let's go to the title screen canvas and make our first script. I'm going to call mine title screen manager. And this is going to handle all functionality that is just basically fired or used at the title screen, like starting a new game, loading your save files. We'll keep it all in the script to keep it nice and neat. I'm going to create my namespace SG. You don't need a namespace. I like using one. Um, mine is SG. Use whatever you want. I'm going to make a public void start network as host. Okay. So, what are we going to do? Well, we need to reference our network manager, but we can't do that without using the netcode library. So up here, let's just say using unity.netcode. Make sure you don't say unity engine.network. It's not the same. So we're going to say network manager dot singleton, which allows us to reference our network manager script in the scene because there's only one at any given time. And then we're going to say dot start host. And this just starts the network 
as a host. So every time we hit the start menu, we want to start as a host. That's our goal. So we can actually call this function now from a button, which we're going to do. I'm going to go down to our press start button that we've just made, and we can actually give this button some logic when we press it. So I'm going to untick Raycast target because I'm only using a controller, but you should keep that ticked if you want to be able to use a mouse and keyboard. So I'm going to come down here now on the button and click on click add a new event. I'm going to drag in the same game object that contains our new script, our title screen manager. I'm going to go down and click title screen manager and then click our new function that we just created. So start game as host. All right, perfect. Now when we click that it will fire this function. And we are referencing the network manager, which is the thing we just made in our scene. I'll go back and show you. So it's this thing right here. And then we are starting as a host. So it just basically presses this button for us and runs the logic. Okay, so just a quick overview again. So again, the host is kind of like the server and a client at the same time. It is both a player and the server authority. A client is just a game client connecting to another host or server. I'm sure a lot of you know plenty about that right now, but if you're just starting with the netcode, don't worry about it. You'll learn more as we go. So you should have an event system game object now in your scene. That should have popped in after you made your canvas. Let's drag in our press start button in the first selected variable. This makes us when you start your game and automatically selects the press start button, which is good if you're using a controller. Next, let's go to our title screen canvas and duplicate our press start button. Let's disable the original and let's rename this duplicate to something like new game or start new game. So we're going to use this button basically to start a game and put our player into the world. So let's go down now into the text and change that to new game or again, whatever you want to call it, as long as it's clear that this is going to start us a new game. And I am going to go over now to the original that we disabled and add a new on click event. What is that event? Well, we want to first disable this button so we can't click it again. So let's say game object dot set active and untick the box. Now we could drag in this new button and enable it. But in the future, we're going to have a menu of buttons like load game, new game, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's create an empty game object under title screen background. And I'm just going to call this title screen main menu. And then after I'm done that, I'm going to click on this icon and hold alt and click this again, this blue T. So it expands it to the size of my canvas. And I'm going to drag in my new game button. So it is a child of this game object. Now, instead of enabling my new game button, I'm going to enable this game object, which will show everything that is also a child of it if it is enabled. Tick the box for is enabled. Then add one more on click event, drag in your button, go to button dot select. Again, that is a new game button. So when you press the start game button, it will automatically select the new game button for you. Disable your main menu and re-enable your press start button and then press play. Now press the start button. You should see your network does start and your player prefab that you dragged in earlier spawns into the scene. And note, if you have Steam open like me, uh, Steam makes your controller inputs act kind of weird in Unity. I just pressed the A input and it pressed it twice for me. So close Steam if you have it open, more on that later. So I'm going to save as, uh, as in save the scene. I'm going to call this scene scene underscore main underscore menu underscore o one. After I have saved the scene, I'm going to delete the sample scene, which is a scene that you just start with with this project. And then I am going to create a new scene for our world. So basically, I'm going to separate this project into two scenes, the menu scene and the world scene, which will have our whole entire world inside of it. It's what we change to when we start our game. So I'm going to call the world scene scene underscore world underscore O one. Now, if I open that, there's nothing here, obviously, because we just made it. We also have to add it to our scenes build index. So if I go to file and then you go to build, you'll see here there is only the scene we used to have, which is the sample scene, which is now gone. So let's add our main menu first, open that up and then go to build settings and click add open scenes. You can delete the old one. Make sure you add the main menu first. So it's your first scene. And then go to your world scene, go to build settings again and add open scenes. Now you'll see there is scene zero and scene one, which is our main menu and our world respectively. Okay, so let's go to the network manager now. And I'm going to change that to world network manager. I'm just a stickler for names. And I'm going to drag that to the bottom of the hierarchy here. And I'm going to make a new game object, I'm going to call this world save game manager. And I'm going to add a script to this, I'm going to call it world save game manager. This is going to handle loading into the world, loading save files, starting a new game, all that good stuff. Okay, so I'm going to delete the start and update function, I'm going to make my namespace, which is SG for Sebastian Graves. And then we're going to begin to write some logic in here. But first, let's say using unity engine dot scene management, this allows us to use some functionality related to scenes like loading a new scene. Okay, 
So let's make a public static world save game manager variable. I'm going to call mine instance. This is going to be a singleton. So if you want, you can call it a singleton instead. I just like using the keyword instance. I don't know why it's preference. That's all. So basically this allows the script to be accessed from anywhere in the project at any time. And there's only one in the project at any given time. Now you might want to use a getter and setter so you can't accidentally override that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm working alone, so I'm just going to keep it as a variable. On awake, we want to check to see if this variable has been filled. So if instance is equal to null, then instance is equal to this. If instance is not null for some reason, it means there's two of these in the scene at one time. There should never be. So we're just going to say destroy game object. Okay. And let's just make a comment here. There can only be one of these world save game managers in the scene at one time. So one script, we want to access this one. And if one happens to exist already, this is a mistake, destroy the game object, and thus destroying the script. So next, let's make a start function. And let's say don't destroy on load. And we're going to use this game object, meaning this stays with us through every scene that we load into the world or the main menu. All right, so next, let's make a public I enumerator which is just a coroutine, basically. And we're going to call this load new game. And then we're going to load the scene asynchronistically. So in the future, we can use a loading screen and it can keep track of the progress. So I'm going to make an async operation variable. I'm going to call it load operation. I'm going to equal it to scene manager dot load scene asynchronistically. You're going to see that's going to require a build index number. That just means the scene number, okay? So we can make a variable for this. So if it changes, we can just change it in the inspector. I'm gonna make a serializable field so it is visible in the inspector. I'm gonna make a variable of type int. I'm gonna call this world scene index, which means the index number of our world scene, we know it's equal to one, so I'm gonna make it one. Then I'm gonna pass the world scene index in this function. And just to show you, I minimize the script, go to file, go to build settings, and you can see our world scene is number one. So you want that number to be equal to that of your world scene. Now, since this is a coroutine, I'm going to say yield return null. So it stops giving us an error and we need to call this function now. So let's go over to our world or rather our title screen manager and right below start network as host. Let's make a new void public void so we can access it from the buttons. Let's say start new game and like our network manager up here, we can access our world save game manager because it is a singleton. So let's say world save game manager. And since we called it instance and not singleton, you might have called it singleton. I'm going to say dot instance. And then we need to use the start coroutine keyword here, bracket, and then world save, ma save game manager dot instance dot load new game, and then save that. Okay, perfect. So let's go to our new game button. And you know, we've made that by duplicating our start game button. So let's get rid of the on click event that it already has. You can see here our press start button is a few. Uh, if we go to our new game button, it has one. We don't want that. So let's just clear it and make a new on click event. And like before, we're going to drag in the game object that contains our title screen manager, which for me is the title screen canvas. We're going to find our title screen manager and I'm just going to look for start new game. Now, if we go and press play, we can go into the game here and you can see pressing start actually spawns our character and starts our network. But if we start the new game here, our player model does not survive the scene change. So we need to make it so when our player model spawns, when the network starts, he survives the scenes changing. So go to our player, the prefab. Let's add a component to him called the character manager. Now across the series, the character manager will just basically be the brains of um, controlling all character functionality and, and any scripts that have to do with the character. Uh, so let's make our namespace as is per tradition minus SG. And then inside here, we're not going to do anything fancy right now. We're just going to make an awake method and we're going to say don't destroy on load and pass this game object, this being the character. Save that and we are good to go. He should now survive the scene change. So let's create a new empty game object. I'm just going to call this player UI manager. In the future, this will house all of our UI logic and will be the hub for interacting between our UI parts. Now I'm going to reset the transform and add a new script or create a new script rather. I'm going to call player UI manager. I'm going to create and open that up. Um, I'm then going to delete the start and update functionality. I'm going to add my namespace as is per tradition minus SG. Yours is whatever you want it to be. And let's write some very simple logic that allows us to test our network. So we're going to delete this in the future. This is just for debugging, but we're going to keep it for a long time because this allows us to quickly test. I'm going to make a header, call it network join 
going to make a serializable field, going to call this or make it of type bool rather, going to call it start game as client. Okay, so when we start the game, uh, when we hit the start button in the menu, it starts it as a host. In order to join as a client, we need to disable the network and run it again as a client. So I'm going to make an update function here. I'm going to say if start game as client, we're going to say start game as client equal to false. So we reset it instantly. I'm then going to say network manager. So for that, I need to say using unity.netcode. Make sure you don't accidentally type in unityengine.networking. It is not the same. So using unity.netcode. Then I'm going to say network manager.singleton. And what we want to do is shut down the network. So we're going to say network manager.singleton.shutdown. That's it. So I'm going to make a comment here so it's very clear. We're going to say we must first shut down the network as a host to start it as a client. So because we want to connect as a client. Okay. So right below that, then we can reference the network manager singleton again. Uh, but I'm going to make a comment first to be super clear. So after we shut it down, I'm going to say we then start the game or start the network or restart the network as a client. So network manager dot singleton dot start as client, I believe start client, there we go. And let's save that. So okay, like our world save game manager and our network manager, we're going to make this a singleton because there should only ever be one in the scene at any given time. So let's make a public static player UI manager, I'm going to call mine instance again, you should use get and set if you're working with teammates uh, or anybody else. So you can't accidentally override this variable from some other script. But I'm just going to keep mine as an open instance here on public. And on awake, I'm going to say if instance is equal to null, I'm going to say instance is equal to this else destroy this game object because there should only ever be one in the scene at any given time. Okay, that looks good, guys, we're almost ready to test this and connect with another client. So let's go over to the prefabs folder, I'm gonna make a new folder, I'm going to call this world managers, because we're going to have a few of these as the series progresses. I'm going to make prefabs of our player UI manager, of our world save game manager, and of our network manager in here and save them. So if we change the prefabs, it will change in the scene for us. It makes them easier to edit. Then I'm going to go to our clones manager. I'm going to open up a new clone. If you don't have this, you can just build the game and create a build and just run the build. I'm going to then say open a new editor after I've cloned it successfully. And I'm going to drag it over on the screen so you can see it. It's on my second monitor. You can see it's just it's an identical project. You might have to change the aspect ratio and stuff and let the window settings. But other than that, it is exactly the same. Now, before you mess around with it, make sure you save your scene in the main project. So then it will just basically carry over the changes into this new project. You never want to edit the other project, always your main project, never the clone. So next, I'm gonna make a start function on the player UI manager, I'm going to say don't destroy on load. So it carries over into the new scene. And then if I press play here, uh, and start the game on my main monitor, I'm going to start the game, go to new game, you can see yep, our man here survives the transition, there he is, right there. Now, if I drag the window over from my second project, and I start it, we're going to try to connect. So I'm gonna hit play. And then when I get into the game view here, I'm just going to press start, it's going to load us into the new scene after hit new game. Then let's go to our player UI manager and click start game as client. It's going to give you this warning message saying you must stop the server first. Just hit it again. It's because the server didn't stop when it tried to start as a client. When we hit it, you're going to see there are two players in both of these scenes. We have just successfully connected to our host from our client player. We have successfully established a network connection between two players. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the first episode. If you made it this far, please be sure to drop a like and leave a comment. It genuinely helps out the series so, so much. As always, a very special thank you to my patrons. It's because of you guys I get to keep making this kind of content, and I love making this kind of content. I'm very excited to start the next episode where we're going to cover some locomotion. We're going to get into inputs, and we're going to see how much time we got and what we can cover. But we're going to start building our basic controller. Very, very excited for that. So I will see you guys in the next one.